Yeah, what's up? This is Chuck D for Kabara. Newbie art right here. This is Chuck D, public enemy number one. Keep it locked.
missed his road. Oh yes, I said he 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 missed his road. Oh yes. To prosecutor, he me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, he go go for prison. Oh yes, he go go for jail. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me road. Oh yes. Straight for road. He me his road. Oh yes. He me his road. Oh yes. He me his road. Oh yes. I say he me his road. Oh yes. I say he me his road. Oh yes. He could pay you fine. Oh yes. He go go for jail. Oh yes. I say he me his road. Oh yes. I say he me his road. Oh yes. Musician. For union of deaf and dumb, he me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, he go play for nothing. Oh yes, he go play for nothing. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, gorilla, we run from bush. Enter Lagos, he enter bus. He me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, it go cause confusion. Oh yes, driver go stop. Oh yes, bus go break. Oh yes, passenger go scatter. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, I say he me his road. Oh yes, if you miss your road, not come my way. I beg you.
Greetings, 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 one and all. Welcome to the Newbie Art Show. I want to welcome everybody aboard. You're in tune to myself, Brother Kobara. Kicked off the show with Fela Kute. He missed road. And coming up on today's show, I actually made it to the exhibition Tapping Into The Known. And I got to interview Obi Okigbo, whose exhibition it is. It concerns her and her inspiration from her poet father, Christopher Okibo. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight into the interview with Obi, and then after that, I will give you more information about the exhibition, the foundation that she set up, and where you can actually get to see the exhibition. So anyway, this is myself and Obi Okigbo in conversation. I will catch you up after this. Interview with Obi Okigbo. She has an exhibition, Tapping Into The Known, at the Brunei Gallery. Welcome, Obi. Oh, thank you. Could you just tell us what's the thinking behind the exhibition? The exhibition is my personal homage to my father, which um, the foundation has dedicated the year 2007 to the memory of uh, Christopher Kibo, the honour his death and 75th and, uh, posthumous anniversary. Okay. Mm. Just tell us a bit about who Christopher was. Christopher Kibo is Africa's greatest poet and uh, he lived between 1932 and 1967 and he died on the fields of the battle fighting for Biafra in 1967. How did the launch go last night? It went very well. I was quite overwhelmed by the positive feedback I got back. Uh, people spent a lot of time reading the poetry and looking at the paintings I was very happy because a lot of people who had never heard of my father's work uh, could see it visually, could listen to it, and uh, were very touched by it. Because so the, the exhibitions, uh, it's a mix of paintings, drawings, tapes, poetry, the real multimedia exhibition and installation as well. So, like you say, I mean, that's like a homage to your dad. I mean, you know, I, I definitely think that with all that's in there, the combination and everything is, you know, it gives a good reflection of what he was about and then also how you've taken it on. Oh, th yeah, thank you. Well, that's for me, it uh, shows uh, that then it's successful because the idea of the exhibition was to make his work accessible to a wider audience and also to share my discovery of my father's work through my art. Okay, because when your dad passed away, you were very young. Yes. So how did that affect your family? I grew up with my mother, my mother's family, and so it never really affected me till very much later, till as an adult, where I began to be curious, to know who my father was. And uh, with that curiosity came the pain of the, the discovery that in fact that it was a big loss to me all these years. Cause, so when you were growing up, did people never talk about like that he was killed in battle? Well, it's either, I don't know if they never talked about it or if I never heard it. Because I'm beginning to think that it must have been such a huge conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> if, if nobody talked about it. I, I now think that it's not possible. So I think it might have been a mixture of the two. Or, yeah, unconsciously not hearing it or maybe I was, had been protected all my life from his memory. Because, I mean, mm. the name is poetry. It was definitely among, like, Pan-Africanists, people interested in African literature. I mean, his name was known as somebody... It's like this thing of he was an artist, he was a poet, and he actually went on the battlefield. A lot of poets and artists and writers, they're given the messages, but they don't actually go and do the direct action. So, I mean, like, your dad was somebody who, well, this is a man of action. This is a man who, the, the talking for him stopped, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's why sometimes I feel um, when I woke up, that's the word I would use uh, five years ago to begin to ask who my father was, and I looked around and everybody said, but didn't you know? <laughs> I felt <laughs> Either that I was just completely ignorant or some way I had been sheltered and um, buffeted from this. In the beginning I regretted it because I felt that it was a lot of time that was lost. But um, on hindsight, um, I think that it was a blessing because it meant that I just led, had 38 years sheltered of what his legacy was and could just live my life and be myself and make, do my own, and my way have my own life not shadowed. 
by yeah by Because you were school. so you were already into art. You were already doing. Well, I was an architect. Doing. Yes, I am an architect. I'm a trained architect, so that's what I did. Okay. Yes. Like a lot of your work there is, um, is, is dealing with like issues of mythology and things like that. I mean, how important was that to you and how important did you feel it is to your family? Um, well, it's important to me. It's uh, something that I've been interested and fascinated in as early back as uh, my studies for architecture when that started. And I think that in fact is what was the link between my work and my father's work. It's not the link, but it gave me the clues. It gave me the clues to decode a lot of his work. And I think that's what myths do in general. They give us clues to understand the deeper parts of uh, life's mysteries. Okay, so you incorporate that in all your artwork? Yes. Okay, because I noticed there was references to um, as well as like in like Igbo cosmology, there was like Sumerian, Chinese, and like you know other bits and pieces. Yes, of well, I would say that the quest, that the journey uh, for self-discovery or the quest for my father has led me through um, different reflections of um, the deus in different times and epochs and mythologies, and living through those, um, manifesting those in those different colors, in the, those primary colors each time, which uh, in the end, they're, they're archetypes of his journey, which um, is the quest to find one's true self, which is the higher self, which is every human being's destiny. So it was just privileged to do this alongside my father. With your work, did you feel that when you were thinking it through, because um, there's, a, you know, there's the ones that are connected with like um, different colors and then the different, and then the different planets, and everything, right? And because the exhibition was on two floors, I caught it in bits. And then it was when I went downstairs, I realized, like, even where you had the planets and you had the planets having a color, there was a colored painting for each one of the planets. <laughs> well, in the beginning, the, in, in fact, it started, the whole thing started off like an intellectual enterprise. I thought, OK, I'm going to set off and I'm going to illustrate my father's poetry and as I separated into two themes and colors. I'm an architect and so it was like the structure behind everything. And of course, when I entered into the whole journey and opened the Pandora's box, it was nothing to do with any intellectual. I was kind of like, <laughs> splash, oops. <laughs> but the structure stay, there's some things that did stay that it kept giving me the rigor. Yeah, of the whole, it became the backbone, if you'd like, of the okay. show. Yeah, it gives it the, its rhythm. The CDs, got them from the Schomburg Center, yeah? Yes. Then like, that's like an archive they had of like, yes. different interviews your father had done. Mm. So when you were hearing his voice, right, how was that? Yeah, it was um, Olu Ogwibe who had told me that he'd heard a recording of uh, my father's voice with an interview uh, with Louis Nkosi. And so I went with him and another friend from Brussels. And all I would say is, like, luckily they were with me because <laughs> it otherwise it would have otherwise been a, a morbid experience mm -hmm. because he, he was younger than I was mm -hmm. when I heard his voice, and yet I was expecting to hear the voice of a father. An old man. An 60, old man, 70. yes. <laughs> even, though I, even though I know, you know on figures that yeah. he's younger, it was such a, such a shock to hear a young man's voice. Okay, that was yeah. just like, that's somebody in my age group. Yes. In the interviews, there's one where he's talking, he's being interviewed, and Langston Hughes, and he's, he's discussing, like, African art, African literature, and he, you know, your dad is saying, like, it's not African literature. It's, li you know, it's, basically, I think his argument is it's good literature, and it shouldn't be, like, ghettoized and fragmented. Yes, yes. And it was for that same reason that he refused the prize. In 1965, the first Art Negre, Le Foie de Art Negre of, um, in Senegal, Dakar, opened by Senghor, for the same reason that he said he wasn't an African poet and he was a poet. Okay, because yes. that so, comes up, that whole negritude movement yes, yes. and everything. Yes, and um, I think he will still stand to that now, today. Okay. Then it or do you want it just judge? You know, I don't know what is the African element <laughs> because I mean, I don't know why you separate that when yeah. you look at me, which element is African and which element, what would you say? <laughs> I'd say you're African. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> Even if I don't say I'm African, I am. <laughs> I'll be fooling myself if I think I'm not, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> my work is my work. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Obiageli. Obiageli's work. But that argument is still ongoing where you have people who want... I mean, maybe one of the influences on your dad was the fact that he read Latin and Greek. So maybe he was looking at... I think his main influence was his Igbo origins. That's the main influence, really. Okay. And so if, you'd say, if you said to him that he was an Igbo poet, I'm sure he would say yes. But he's not an African oh, poet or black can't, poet. He can't represent Tanzania yeah, well, or South Africa. Yeah, I mean, he's big continent. yes, yeah, and it's you know that that is being ghetto. But if you want to talk about his origin, which he, a lot of his work and his life defended, he gave his life to defend, and that's uh, Igbo. Okay. Yes. Okay, no, mm. because that didn't come out clearly then, right? Because, you know, you have people who they say, I'm not African Yeah, because they all. say, bec the people think that because he says he's not African, he's saying that he's European, he's not, yeah. he's just, he's not, don't get, get to, you don't look at an English poet and say, oh, you know, the white poet or the yeah, girl from this continent, you'll probably say the Welsh poet. Yeah, or <laughs> yeah because I suppose an yes. English person can't represent Russia. Yeah. Is that kind of okay? Yes. Mm. Okay. And shouldn't be made to represent Russia just because he's an artist or he's a writer. Maybe he can represent writers, yeah, which are a, the, which yeah. are really his uh, the kindred spirits. It should be more related to his art, not to the continent that he was mm. born. People that he actually shares ideas, yes. cosmology, whatever. Was yes. mm. okay. Okay. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. a lot clearer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's lucky he's got you too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's lucky. He's lucky you're there to kind of like, you know, because I think you know at the time as well, because it was in the middle of the kind of Black Power movement. Mm -hmm. Anybody who didn't say, "Oh, I'm 100 percent Black mm. Power all the way," was mm. like getting mm. slated. So yes, you mm. know, mm. yeah. You met a lot of your dad's friends. Yeah, yes. how did you feel meeting them, and mm. what kind of things did they say? Well, it's, it's been, uh, for me, my father not only left the poetry, but he's left me a big family. So I've got, um, I call them my fairy godfathers. <laughs> All his Mbari, the Mbari group. Um, I met um, Professor Chinua Achebe, Wole Shoinka. Who I spoke, I'm in correspondence with Louis Nkosi and um, Georgina, Uli and Georgina Bayer. Um, Uche Okeke, I've met. I, th I think it's more, it was more of an emotional and a shock for them than for me because um, the last time they saw him he was, he was my age yeah. and according to a lot of them I look like him or I speak like him so it was like watching a ghost, <laughs> it was kind of a bit spooky for them in the beginning okay. and then yeah, then it was okay and rip, yeah. And, also and like I say I've, I've gained a family. Yeah. Also, probably bringing up like a lot of memories in death. Mm. It's not like, or you know, because mm. time maybe passes and people mm. just think about somebody once in a while. Yes. And then when you have the physical representation in front of you, it's like, what's <laughs> it in your face as it's. Yeah, say. and I think in all that yeah. time, you know, people hadn't seen me and yeah. some people had even forgotten that he had a daughter. <laughs> So, so, but they were all really helpful. Very helpful. They're all very helpful. They've um, all supported. They've all le parrainage. They've all been um, the trustees. You know, the okay. yes of the patrons. Christopher. Yes, the patrons of the foundation. Okay. Yes, and we're now taking uh, the foundation with um, Professor Chukuma Azwanye from University of Boston, Massachusetts. We're organizing a symposium. Uh, in September with all his friends, his contemporaries, the literature world, uh, paying really their respects to his work. So where's that symposium going to be? It's in Boston. It's going to be held in Boston University in association with Harvard, UMass, University of Boston and Wellesley College. It's the first time four Boston universities have come together to okay. host yeah, yes, a conference. Uh, what other progress has the foundation been making? So, in terms of the short-term projects, is um, these 2007 celebrations, which this exhibition kicks off, and there will be the symposium, and there will also be the memorial service in Ojoto, because, you know, my father was never buried in his village. Okay. He never had a burial in his village, and so the memory is still quite raw. Where was he buried? Uh, well, it's the speculation. All oh, right. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was said before um, categorically that he was buried near Opidongton, where he was mm -hmm. killed. But there's now speculation that maybe 
It was buried in the north. Okay. So this would just basically be a symbolic resting place for him in my, father, in my grandfather's compound because that's important for us as evil people mm. to have a place at home. Yeah, I didn't realize like, you know, you mm. didn't, you know, there was no official burial. No. Yeah. So that's very, very important. In fact, that's one of the most important things this year for me will be to have a symbolic official resting place for him. So the people mm. from his time, they all, are they yeah. all looking forward to that? Well, we haven't, haven't really been home. I've been, I'm working on it. That's I'm working on with the Okibo family. Okay. Yeah, and that's a, a family project so you know the elders in the family will be speaking about it and uh, we'll be making the organizations really starting this summer yeah. he was probably one of the most famous Igbos anyway who died in the, in the Biafran war and um, did you meet Ojukwu? No I haven't no. yet had the haven't courage to <laughs> <laughs> no um, already when I met like you talked to me about meeting his other friends yeah. each time it was so emotional and so I take everything step by step and, I, and until I'm also emotionally ready to be able to speak to people that were there on the battlefront with my mm -hmm. father and saw him in those last few moments. I just take it step by step. Because yeah. Yeah. Ojuku's popping up again. He's like, he's wanting yes. to be president. Yes, no, we were supposed like to meet two years ago and it never happened because it was, yeah, it was for the event of his 70th birthday mm -hmm. and he was there with, with a lot of soldiers and I wasn't really ready. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, a lot of people were disappointed that the way yeah. that things ended. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, but step by step, we're just doing things yeah. step by step. Okay, where else is the exhibition going to be? The exhibition uh, at the moment is in plans to move. I know the curator, Annabelle, is hoping that it will be an itinerant exhibition and it will move. Uh, she was seeing it moving to New York okay. the next, but um, we haven't got any. I know a little part of it will be moving to Boston for the conference, to be in conjunction with the conference. But as a whole, we haven't had any proposals yet. Going back to the spirituality and mythology, I mean, your dad actually came from a line of people who they looked after shrines in... Ojoto. What was passed down to you from that side of the family? The gift of painting, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm. okay. Have you spoken to them, though? I know that uh, my father saw me as the reincarnation of his mother. This I found out in the manuscripts. I don't know if you saw them okay. in, in the cabinet. Yeah. On the right. Well, I know everything's supposed to jump two generations, <laughs> so like he's supposed to be the reenact. Yes, the well, he's yeah, this. he's yeah. So he's he's written that you know this the path the dance of the painted maidens was dedicated to me, and that it was about the birth and is dedicated the birth of his daughter, who in fact is a reincarnation of her paternal grandmother, whose family provide the priests for the shrine. So I guess it's just a matter of believing and then you receive the gift, I think. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so as soon as you go back, they just be like, yeah, we've got a job for I you. Think, I, think, yeah, I think it's up to me or not, yeah. whether I believe it or not, yeah. and if I, I continue it or not. Yeah. I think that's what it is at okay. home. Yeah. So at the moment you're mm. based more in Belgium. Yes, yeah. I live in Brussels. Okay. What's the art mm. scene like there? Very varied, dynamic. There's a lot of contemporary African artists are living and working in Brussels. Okay. Yes. So, like, like, so that's yeah. Exhibition space, workshops for you there, and everything like that. Um, I'm not a full-time, full-time <laughs> artist. I have the two, my two children, yeah. that I look after, and uh, I work from home of my studio at home okay. yes but there is a lot of stuff going on to see lots for inspiration and to see what's happening to okay. keep up to date okay. with art scene, yes. what message would you like to leave with the listeners well I hope they enjoy the show I hope people that see this take the time to go to the exhibition and I hope they enjoy the show because I think it's worth discovering my father's poetry Okay, yes. Obi, I want to thank you for all the work you've done with for mm. yourself and for your father's legacy. Mm. Okay. Thank right. you. Thanks a lot. Thank all you. the best. Thank you. Dance of the Painted Maidens by Christopher Okibo. After she had set sail, after she had set sail, after the mother of earth had set sail, after the earth mother on her homeward journey, the fires at the rear of her the fires of the end the flaming rainbow behind her like a wolf she devours 
like a mantis strikes down the waters of the beginning. The going, the gone waters, the back swirling eddies, the waves in battle ahead of her in the attacking storm. And they came to us after she had set sail, bringing to us the secret. And they came bringing to us the secret on broken clay tablet cooled. From the seven quarters of the globe, past the seven seas, past the seven distant deserts, bearing beads of coral and kola nuts fit for a queen. They came bringing to us the secret by man of giant testicles coded. The gatekeepers at the seven gates heard them, trembled at their approach. The onlookers marveled at their standards and their plumed helmets. And they surged round about us and round about the clearing, round about us like a fence of thorns raised against the onlookers. Thank you.
Kote, no agreement, that's for part two. Okay, and before that, I gave you the interview with Obe Okibo talking about her father and the exhibition called Tapping Into the Known. Excellent exhibition. I mean, there's a selection of paintings, poetry, multimedia. There's audio tapes of her dad in conversation with a variety of people, including um, Langston Hughes, Lewis and Kose, Dennis Durden. There's so much down there. It's on two floors, this exhibition. And, you know, like it covers African spirituality, art, literature, the whole range. Obi gave you one poem. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you another poem. But before that, she has set up a foundation for her dad. And that foundation is going to be doing a lot of work. It's through the foundation that the exhibition is actually on right now. So let me just give you an idea of some of the work of the Christopher Okibo Foundation. The mission statement is, we have a responsibility to the African peoples on the continent and diaspora to hold up beacons of light in this period of darkness plagued by war, disease, and despair. When civilizations are long gone, only the arts remain as testimony of our evolution. Our duty as individuals and as servants is to pass on the baton of hope to our children and future generations by holding on to that integrity which lies in our culture and minds. The Foundation's goal is to restore to Christopher Okigbo the place he deserves internationally and to further the poet's humanist vision and ideal through promotion of contemporary creation in Nigeria and cultural exchange worldwide. The purpose of the foundation is twofold. On the one hand, we will conserve the patrimony left by Christopher Okigbo, a platform centralizing all information and current research on Christopher Okigbo to promote publication and translation of his poetry, to generate the interest of a wide audience and ensure lasting circulation of his books. On the other, inspired by Okibo's polyvalent talents, the foundation will act as a patron of the arts 
to provide opportunity for literary events and prizes, artist residencies, grants, and other such support in the development of a thriving artistic culture. The current objectives of the Christopher Okibo Foundation will dedicate the year 2007 to the 40th anniversary of his death, to his memory and celebration of his life and achievements. To work towards this aim, it intends to launch a series of events with themes revealing the poet and his work. The first phase of the project will be spread over the next five years. The scale of our undertaking is inspired by the breadth of his influence around the globe. The season will open with a memorial ceremony which will be held in Ojoto, the poet's birthplace. The occasion centred on the Igbo tradition will enable his family, village and close friends alike to seal the peace around his memory. The spiritual gathering is envisaged as a simple, sober moment culminating with the unveiling of a commemoration plaque marking a symbolic place of rest for Christopher in his own hometown. Our first priority is the republication of labyrinths and the collected poems, his two masterpieces, which are today out of print. To ensure diffusion throughout the African continent, a new bilingual collection of poems will be edited with translations into French and Igbo. The circulation and promotion of those works will be undertaken at literary events and during an international symposium devoted to the poet's legacy. Its visibility will be accrued with the website of the foundation. Understanding the scope of the project as a whole, the Archives Centre, already in operation from Brussels, Belgium, has been initiated. We are pursuing a thorough and systematic research program to collect, centralise and preserve all current information on Christopher Okigbo. The restoration of retrieved manuscripts as well as the creation of an extensive audiovisual library comprising interviews of all surviving contemporaries lay as foundation pillars to our enterprise. This collection will be housed in the foundation's base in Ojoto, Anambra State, Nigeria. How and why has Christopher Okibo marked his contemporaries? An artistic tribute paying homage to the poet's contemporary heritage will be assembled showing the work of artists sharing Christopher Okibo's vision. A documentary film will attempt to explore the artist's role in defining the identity of a newly independent Nigeria, also to decipher the enigma of the man behind the poet. Now, one of the things about Christopher Okigbo's death is that his body was never found. Some people said he was buried at Opie Junction, where he was killed near Nsuka. Other people said that he was buried in the north, so the family don't actually have a body. So one of the things that Obi will be looking into is to actually have a ceremonial plaque so that at least there is a place because it's really important that you know, you know where the body of your father, your brother, your relative, especially in Igbo culture and in a lot of African cultures, that resting place. You know, people always talk about, you know, where will I find my resting place? So his brother... Pius Okigbo, who passed away a couple of years ago, one of the things he said in a toast for Christopher Okigbo was he was born bearing the sign of war. He died in a war in which he was engaged in defending the values which he held most dear, honour, courage, truth, justice, fairness, integrity, and above all, freedom. In his memory, we have a duty. It is to keep alive these values because therein lies his true testament and the tribute to be paid to his genius. And if you want more information, there is a website. It's www.christopherokigbo.org. And Christopher Okigbo is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R, Christopher hyphen Okigbo, spelled O-K-I-G-B-O dot org, O-R-G. So that's ChristopherOkigbo.org. And, you know, it's worth going to that website, checking out what's there. Anyway, 
Ubi asked me to play lots of Fela Kuti, so her wish is my command.
my lady frustration from the 69 sessions recorded in Los Angeles. That's when Fella kind of moved from just what he was doing and he linked up with all the funketeers out in America on the West Coast. When the West Coast was really hot, you know, that was back in the Black Power days. And then when he came back, he, he changed the names of the band. The band became Africa 70, Egypt 80. Anyway, before we move off Christopher O'Keegbo, make me give you one of his poems and the more I read this poem, the more it's, you know, I mean, people write things at a certain time, but when you look back, it's maybe like a premonition. So the poem I'm going to read is called Distances. From flesh into phantom on the horizontal stone, I was the sole witness to my homecoming. Serene lights on the other balcony, redolent fountains, bristling with signs. But what does my divine rejoicing hold? A bowl of incense, a nest of fireflies. I was the sole witness to my homecoming. For in the inflorescence of the white chamber, a voice from very far away chanted, and the chamber descanted. The birthday of the earth paddled me home through some dark labyrinth, from laughter to the dream. Minor into my solitude incarnate voice of the dream you will go with me as your chief acolyte again into the anthill i was the sole witness to my homecoming and you know that bit i was the sole witness to my homecoming it reminded me of the very fact that you know he never had an official burial place so Imagine what that would be like. Anyway, Nigeria is a very complicated country. Yes, you've probably been here, but fella did Viva Nigeria. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the people will work something out in time. I don't know how they're going to work it out, but let me play you some more fella. Viva Nigeria. <laughs> Brother Fela Ransom Kuti. This is one time I would like to say a few things. Men are born, kings are made, treaties are signed, wars are fought. Every country has its own problems, so has Nigeria, so has Africa. Let us bind our wounds and live together in peace. Nigeria, one nation indivisible. Long live Nigeria, viva Africa. The history of mankind is full of obvious turning points and significant events. Though tongue and tribe may differ, we are all Nigerians, we are all Africans. War is not the answer, it has never been the answer, and it will never be the answer fighting amongst each other. Let's live together in peace. Nigeria, one nation indivisible. Long live Nigeria. Viva Africa. Let's eat together like we used to eat. Let's plan together like we used to plan. Sing together like we used to sing. Dance together like we used to dance. United we stand, divided we fall. You know what I mean. I hope you did, my dream. Let us bind our wounds and live together in peace. Nigeria, one nation indivisible. Long live Nigeria, viva Africa. Brothers and sisters in Africa, 
Never should we learn to wage war against each other. Let Nigeria be a lesson to all. We have more to learn towards building than destroying. Our people can't afford any more suffering. Let's join hands, Africa. We have nothing to lose but a lot to gain. War is not the answer. War has never been the answer. And it will never be the answer. Fighting amongst each other. One nation indivisible. Long live Nigeria. Viva Africa. Tune in to Nubi Art on Sound Radio 1503 AM and www.soundradio.info for the best in African arts and current affairs with news, views and interviews about the African experience in the UK, Americas, Caribbean and the motherland. If you want to get in touch with us, it's newbiart at soundradio.info and africanquest at hotmail.com. Nubi Art, a different perspective on the African world. Show that you know yourself. 